course, yesterday I posted a video about George Jenko making some pretty big allegations against Logan Paul and the Impulsive podcast. There was specifically an episode with Bobby Lee that we'll get more into later that is the big focus of this video. But first, I want to talk about why Logan is still a wolf in sheep's clothing and his response, while respectable, is nowhere near what it should be. Just really quick, I'm so close to 4K. Please subscribe and like the video. Thank you. Now, the basic premise of the beef with George Jenko and Logan Paul yesterday, George Jenko brought Mike onto his own podcast and the three of them, George, Mike, and Logan, used to be on a podcast together called Impulsive. Basically, a lot of things happened behind the scene and Mike came on George's podcast to, I don't want to say outright defend it, but pretty much all he did was like backtrack for Logan and, and otherwise defend the podcast in itself. Numerous times on the show, which I'm sure a number of shows do, caught things that we believe will protect the integrity or reputation of the guests. That protected nobody but him. Including money, George brought up a point about the money that he made on Impulsive and how he didn't want to talk about it and how he needed to go start his own show because he wasn't making enough money. The last straw for me was, Mike, I had to s escape. I had to leave for my own fear. I told, when Logan came after me for my religion, the show hit rock bottom and we weren't getting paid. I was getting paid $5,000 a month and that's covering just read. I have a mortgage, I have my sister that works for me, I have Belle, I'm trying to get married, I had all these things. So I had to start my own show because we're not making money on this show and I'm getting pushed out of this well, show. Well, at the time we were making money. You okay. made you made money on the show. But at the time, we're a couple months. How I much was, money did you make I was over the I course I can show of you my books, I was spending 10 Gs a month being on the show. Right. Name me a job that you're a part of that you spend $10,000 to do. <laughs> okay, so that's one. Two, and by the way, let's not forget that for a year and a half I didn't get paid. No, and me and I didn't get paid for years okay. until I got paid. Okay, so right? but, 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 but you sure did. That... But you did make a sizable amount of money on the show. And by the what way, say, always like... grateful. I'll, I was always Something grateful. Something like for that. It. I, yeah, I don't like to talk about money, but I, so, I was always grateful. Always, always grateful. Well, here's where Logan starts cooking his response. I had to start my own show because we're not making money on this show, and I'm you getting made, pushed out. You made money on the show. The I can show the... you my books. I was spending 10 G's a month being on the show. All right, let's talk about this. Obviously, I wasn't on the podcast to represent myself, so I'd like to clarify a few things that were said. As well as having his own credit card, all expenses related to the show were paid for, including all travel and lodging. Obviously, George's total reimbursement came out to $20,000.317. I'd love to see any books that show otherwise. Spending $120,000 a year to be on a show is a little confusing. Now, this is something I wanted to say yesterday, but I kind of forgot. Why were you taking a job opportunity where you had to pay ten thousand dollars in expenses to be on the show which logan does debunk as i'll show you here but still i mean that's an obscene amount of money to take a job opportunity and yes the job definitely helped you grow to make the george janko show but i mean still if you're gonna complain about having to spend the ten thousand dollars to be on the show you shouldn't be on the show i mean if i could do something as big for my career as impulsive i would make it work in the best way that i possibly could and i wouldn't bitch about it once i left the show that's just one thing against george janko i didn't get to talk about about it a lot yesterday because it was focused on other things just wanted to say that first and foremost so logan immediately debunks it at least to what the consumer can see obviously we can't look at these books and these account statements we don't know whose side is real it's kind of bombastic for george to say i was spending ten thousand dollars a month to be on the show and logan immediately saying no everything was paid for you didn't pay anything which totaled up to twenty thousand dollars so one of them are wrong and there could be gray area of course of george maybe spending things Things that the impulsive credit card didn't cover or one of them just outright being hyperbolic I don't know but one of them is definitely wrong here and I hope they do an in-person podcast together so I can hear them talk about this specific point this is a guy who's sending a screenshot of 11 million dollars a week that he's making this statement is so crazy that it's almost laughable that would mean I'm making 572 million dollars a year I'm nowhere near that what happened was prime had a very successful month I think we did like 60 to 70 million and I sent it to our group chat because I was proud of the business I was stoked to show the boys and I think George maybe misinterpreted that as like my personal income this i will give brownie points to logan was a respectable response saying hey i made this crazy amount of money and it was because prime had a crazy great month and i think that's awesome i think if you're ever surrounded by people who don't want to truly see you succeed who have jealousy and resentment toward your goals well then you shouldn't be with them because i don't even think this is bragging i think while logan has bragged in the past i, I can truly see him being like guys look at this drink company that 
you know, I helped build. Look at how much income it's 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 bringing me. You know, I think that's really cool. I have to give Logan props for this. The show hit rock bottom, and we weren't getting paid. I was getting paid five thousand dollars a month. But you did make a sizable amount of money on the show. And by the what way, I'm always like, grateful. I was always grateful. Like that. For it. Yeah, I don't like to talk about money. I know he doesn't want to talk money. I know he believes it out, but George made three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars in the fifteen months that he got paid for on Impulsive. We'll start off saying that it is petty for Logan to give the exact dollar amount once George bleeped mics on purpose, but hey, it's his business. I just hope George didn't lose any sponsors or anything specific from this amount of money being leaked. I don't think he would. I'm just saying you can obviously see the petty nature of it in there somewhere. The work requirements consisted of about three days a month, uh, three hours each day, traveling the world, networking, and meeting some of the coolest people ever. It comes out to about $2,300 per hour, and he also had 10% equity of the entire show. Now, if it wasn't for the very last point I'm going to bring up in this video, I was so ready to say fuck George just from this number alone. $317,000 just over a year and you only had to work three days a month. There are so many things that I would do much worse than doing three fucking days of a podcast for $317,000 because George, I can promise you there are people that work so, so much harder than you that earn so, so much less than that and they can barely get by. So you know what? If you want to bitch and complain about money, even if it was $5,000 a month, go fuck yourself. That is something I also should have said yesterday, but now that I'm seeing this feasible number in front of me, whoo, that one, that one got to me a little bit. Not you, not Caleb, not Kevin, not Dylan. Nobody fucking called me when I got fired. George did not get fired. He quit. I'll touch on that in a second, but after he quit, I called him frequently. I reached out. I wanted to reconcile the friendship. I invited him to my birthday party and WrestleMania and even my ranch a few weeks later. He chose not to come. He also unfollowed all the people he mentioned on Instagram, which is maybe why they didn't call him. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but he still does not follow them to this day. And then on my birthday, you guys shot three episodes, so I couldn't show up. The two episodes he's talking about, not three, were shot four days after George's birthday. His birthday's on January 3rd. We shot those episodes on January 7th. We were already in Vegas signing the UFC to Prime, and as we do, want to capitalize on the location and our use of time and energy and the guests in that city. I mean, the fact that Logan's got receipts for all these texts and stuff is kind of incriminating, George. I'm not gonna lie. I'm still mad at Logan, and we'll get to that. Now, you may have seen that response, which, I mean, I gotta... I gotta give it to the man, Logan, either his PR team behind this response or whatever. It was mature. It was well-paced. It was it was a very golden response to a very serious podcast against him. But what is my complaint about the response? Well, it is the main focus of yesterday's video. It doesn't have anything to do with George leaving Impulsive. If you want my honest, quick opinion about that, I think George is a crybaby and he should have professionally left. And if not, just have ghosted Logan and not done the stupid petty stuff. Yes, there was some drama between them, but dude, you were getting paid so much. Like I said, I would do anything to be in your shoes. So there you go. I think George is a crybaby for that part. However, the main beef that I have with Logan and Impulsive and the whole shtick is there was an episode they recorded with Bobby Lee where I shown proof in my last video. And I don't know how deep this goes. Like I said, in my last video, I don't know if George wants to press charges or if he considers them, you know, not as serious, whatever. That's George's prerogative. But there was some evidence, visual evidence that I had shown of very non-wanted touching from Bobby Lee to George several times throughout the interview. Not once has Logan publicly denounced Bobby Lee for it. Has he said this isn't right? Has he seemed to check on George about all this? That is the biggest deal out of any of this. You can think that this response is great. You can think that he cooked or whatever. You can think anything you want. But the fact is, if George is serious of, of calling it sexual harassment and sexual assault, which it, it looks like it to me, Logan is, is hiding it. He has cut footage, which as a boss and as a friend is terrible. So no matter how much Logan disproved about finances and beef and friendship ending dumbass shit, he purposely hid a sexual assault on one of his co-hosts to protect a guest that he had on his podcast. So that is why I am still furious with Logan. And yes, my opinion will never change him because he's exactly like Homelander. He doesn't care. I think some kind of repercussions should follow. Granted, I'm obviously not the first one to say that Logan deserves repercussions. He's deserved them since like 2015. But yes, you can be saying and think, oh my God, this response was juiced because it was a good response. It was a very good direct response to what George was talking about on his episode with Mike. However, we cannot as a community, as people rationally outside looking into all this stuff, just let a sexual assault go under the radar because of how hard Logan is trying to
trying to hide it. Notice he didn't say one single thing about it in this clip. Something very notable is Logan has his replies off to only people that he mentions. So basically, if anybody feels the same way I do, they're not allowed to freely express that in his main Twitter thread where he posted this video. This crypto zoo scandal thing came out again, so I can't really flack him on hiding the comments because they've been like that ever since. So take that with a grain of salt. Um. Dang, first of all, happy Mother's Day before I get into this drama because I, I gotta go take my mom out. I'm having a splendid day today. Uh, second, yo, your TikTok is cute, bro. It's cute. I get it. You're doing your best to show face. Do whatever you need, bro. Like, talk to your team. Do whatever you need. But when you want to be a man, come talk to me like a man. Let's we'll sit down like men and talk about it. Mike did it. Mike's a real man. He, got, he had the chance to come sit, talk. Show all of his points of views, brother. You could bring camera. You could bring re you could bring your attorney, bro. Come sit on the couch and talk to me like a man. Let's talk, bro. Because obviously you want to talk. Let's talk. Come talk to me, bro. Now here you can see George did respond to the whole thing. And this I don't really warrant as a piece of the puzzle. Just because obviously this benefits George. He's trying to get Logan Paul in here. That video will go absolutely fucking bananas when it comes out. So that's kind of what I think he's doing here. Is he's fishing for financial gain through AdSense, through the podcast. Whatever. Let him do it. Let him be. The beef, I think, ends there. They're, they're probably not going to go back into it anymore. He doesn't really refute anything that Logan said. He just says, come be like a man, you know, whatever. I, let me preface this because I didn't say it in the last video. I don't like George at all. I don't like Logan at all. I don't really know Mike enough to not like him, but what I've seen, I don't like. So yeah, that's just me. I'll bet, you know, like I said yesterday, there's going to be some more Logan Paul stuff before the end of 2024. I'm going to have to go over again. So I'll see you there. Make sure to subscribe next time.